Well, welcome back. We're now going to talk to Julia Banks, who actually saved the federal government. She certainly Peter, did. She, she did, certainly didn't did. she? Well, Without her... Uh, we're delighted to have you here, Julia, and uh, it's great to have you here because, as Peter was just saying, yeah, you basically saved the government's neck. And, I mean, what a good thing you've done for Australia. <laughs> I mean, what a way to start. What a great what a way to start. Sort That's of thing, a good rap you got. Sort of thing you, you can rap. tell your grandchildren, you know, I saved... Save the Mal government. I saved Malcolm Turnbull, is what I'd be saying <laughs> if I was you. You might as well personalise it. Exactly. But... Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> uh, can I just say to our audience, though, that uh, Julia Banks has a fair bit of experience at the political level, so that's a, always a help. Uh, she's been very determined. She, she stopped work ages ago to get into this campaign well before it was announced. Uh, she's had senior business uh, roles in, uh, I think, by and large, manufacturing. I might even ask her about that. Uh, she's got a law degree and an arts degree from Monash. Now, that is well, number you, one you in Melbourne. You and I both have those. So it's well qualified. No, ours is, ours is Monash. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but I'm in the same qualification. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, it wouldn't be quite well, the same. University wouldn't be quite the same. Great institution. I thought you might get round to that point. He's a, <laughs> he's a bit slow, Julia, so that's to your advantage, because <laughs> uh, you, you, you're here. Uh, she's also been a member of the Federal Government's Advisory Council on Intellectual Property. Oh. Well, you've got to be pretty smart. Yes. To know about that, because... Uh, well, patents are important for us as well. well past my level, I'd have to say, as a lawyer. Um, and uh, she's been on the... Uh, she's been a director of the Australian Made Company. And, oh, good. And involved in quite a lot of charities as well. So, OK. Uh, I just think that's important for people to know, for somebody who's you a new You could member. almost have been in the Labor Party, uh, Julie. Uh, oh, don't be so... <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't smile at his silly jokes. <laughs> Please. Wash uh, your mouth out, Peter. It's, it's <laughs> that's right, that one. That think, one, yeah. Yeah, OK. That one. Um, well, Julia, look, can we start with just uh, your sense of what was really important in the result? What were some of the things that made the difference? I mean, well, for example, throw in... Start with Medicare. What, you know, there was a lot of talk about that. What, what would you say about that? What was your experience? Well, um, first may I say just to the comment that, you know, I saved the government and, you know, the, if it weren't for this seat, we wouldn't be in a majority government. I actually... I'm going to take a leaf out of my new colleague's um, um, book, Christopher Pine, and, and equate it to a Hawthorne-Sydney game. You know, I really see it as a, the election. It was a, you know, like a Hawthorne-Sydney game. It's close all the way through, and then right at the end, um, Cyril kicks a goal and we win by a point. But at the end of the day, we've won government and we're a majority government, and it's 76 seats and, you know, and, uh, you know, her, her, got our eyes on Herbert as well. So, you yep. know, that... That's the, that's the way I see it. We well would not spoken. have won the election without well spoken. the team. But don't yeah. take that advice from Christopher again, given his own And I practice. am a Hawthorne supporter, for the record. <laughs> but the important Sorry, difference is, what was that? But, Julia, the important difference is you were the only conserv uh, LNP who won a seat from the Labor Party. That's the relevance of your win. Yes, indeed. And, that you know, that is a fact. And, um, and indeed, um, you know, I've had a been the beneficiary of a lot of praise from my colleagues and indeed the Prime Minister. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, um, the campaign was basically a... I mean, Anna Burke had been the member, as you'd know, for over 18 years. Um, it was always going to be a challenge. It was always going to be a close race. Um, but I guess from my business experience, you know, I've, I've worked all my life, as, as Peter mentioned, you know, through as a chief counsel and senior executive, largely in manufacturing companies. So I've worked for Kraft and GSK and then George Western Foods. And notwithstanding that I've been in those roles, and I moved in-house very early in my career, namely because, and apologies to lawyers in the room, I didn't want to spend my day-to-day -day life with lawyers in private practice every day. I wanted to work in business. So I've worked in manufacturing business, and these companies employ thousands of Australians all over the, uh, over the country. And at the end of the day, you can't get things done unless you actually go out to the factories. So I've walked through more food factories than you could imagine. And, you know, I think that quality engagement with people one to one, and that's what I applied to the Chisholm um, electorate. You know, I just... And I, do, I don't see it as work. Yes, I did give up my job. Um, it was the first time I was officially unemployed, so to speak. I gave up my job um, at George Weston earlier, early in the year so I could give 100% to the campaign um, because I really felt... 
that one one on one connection with people was the most important thing to do and that one on one connection with the community. So and they obviously responded to that. So it certainly yeah. worked, yeah. And so what would you say worked yeah. for you and what didn't and what didn't so work for you in the campaign? Well I think I think one of the most um, disappointing things for me was certainly in, in relation to the Medi Scare campaign because having worked in the corporate world and particularly you know in, in marketing driven organizations where it's all about advertising is um, you know the the whole misleading um, um, pace about the whole Medi Scare lie was just um, appalling to me I just it was quite shocking and it really it really came um, to heart, it was probably the most emotional call or interaction I'd had with the constituent during the campaign. I, you know, after a day at pre-poll, I get a phone call, a phone message for this guy to ring him back, and I rang him back, and his voice was actually quivering, and he said, um, "Julia, you know, I've been a liberal voter all my life, but my and my wife has just been diagnosed with cancer, um, and I got a phone call in the dead of night um, from the Labor Party." last night um, telling me that the Liberals are going to sell Medicare. Tell me that's not true. Please tell me that's not true. And, you know, I just felt the impact that brought it home to me. And, you know, I hope it brings it home to the Labor Party in terms of, you know, basically attacking the most vulnerable people in the dead of night, people who have landlines, who can't put their phone on, uh, do not disturb. And, you know, this, this um, situation this story, um, I, as I said, it was the most emotional call of the election and, and people were really angry about about that whole thing. Um, and that was that was really important to me. That's what, it sort of also brought it home to me that, you know, that one-to-one -one contact where you can actually say to people and talk to people and they see your authenticity, then that, that's what cuts through, I think. And the, yeah. and, the C, and the CFA, was that another one of those issues that protruded into Absolutely, the Absolutely, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, it's certainly something I'm extremely passionate about. I mean, um, as, as you mentioned, Peter, I've, uh, you know, worked in manufacturing all my life and um, always um, worked mm. with the unions, um, but I've I had, you know, personal bad experience with the unions. Um, you know, one, very early in my career, I um, walked through a picket line um, to attend a management meeting and, uh, you know, as I walked through, they thought I was media, so I was the you know, sort of wolf whistles and all the rest of it. And then as I was, by the time I finished the meeting, they realised, A, I worked for the employer, B, I was of Greek heritage. And, um, and they literally chased me to my car, rocking my car backwards and forwards, plastering their face against, you know, the car and calling me every name under the sun, including WOG and, you know, attacking me for my gender and my cultural background. And I think, you know, that that sort of interaction shapes, you know, what your view is. Um, you know, I believe there is a place for unions, but there is no place for that sort of thuggery and behaviour. And the CFA to, to, you know, volunteerism is what we do in Australia. It cuts to the very ethos of us as Australians. You know, when people need help, it comes from everywhere in Australia. And you, need, you know, I often would say to people, everyone remembers where they were on Black Saturday and, and its aftermath, or, you know, if you're as old as I am, Ash Wednesday. And, um, you know, and it, if but for the volunteer spirit and ethos, um, you know, Victoria would never have got out of that. So to try and um, overlay that with the mantle of unionism and to try and um, take that away from mm. from what is um, our very spirit is um, people were very angry and frustrated about that in you know in the constituent in the electorate of Chisholm even though it's obviously in Melbourne's east and very urbanised but um, yeah fundamentally Julie let me ask you one thing because unfortunately it. time's getting away from us one of the first votes you're going to sure. have obviously is going to be on superannuation and George uh, Christensen, one of our Queenslanders, as you know, has indicated that he doesn't uh, particularly like the changes. So do you have a view about the changes to superannuation? I mean, there's a lot of people around the place who don't particularly like the changes, and I must admit I'm one. So when that vote comes, how do you feel about it? I've got to ask you some tricky look, I, questions I out believe... of this, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, superannuation, it's a big reform. It's a big reform and it warrants discussion. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, again, going back to my business experience, it's not necessarily that you um, 
agree with every element of a reform. If you're, what, you know, this is something that has to go to uh, government and um, cabinet, and you know the nuances of the superannuation package will be discussed and rolled out in accordance with the normal procedures. But I, I believe that um, at the end of the day, it is a big reform, and it is a reform that we need um, to make our budget sustainable. Julia, thank you for that. We yep. both wish you well and congratulations again. And thank we will no doubt much. talk to you over the next three years. So good luck. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Great to see you. Okay, yeah. thanks so much, Peter right. and Peter. Okay. Thank you. Thank thanks. You. All right. The Olympics.